well hello i hope you're doing well in this video uh, i'm gonna be showcasing my workflow as a 3d artist and i'm gonna be showing you the programs and the processes i go through to make this white bodied lamborghini but before we begin with that i'd like to quickly introduce myself I go by the name of Supreme Karak. I'm a self-taught 3D artist and a graphic designer. I mainly work on automotive related stuff and I started back in late 2019 and I've been doing this for almost two and a half years now. I like to make body kits for cars and that's what we'll be doing in today's video as well as I've gotten a lot of messages on Instagram and TikTok of people asking me to show them how I do what I do and what programs I use. So for the main program that I use, um, I use Blender, it's free. I use it to model my kits for designing the fenders, the front bumpers, everything. Once I'm done with that, I move over to Keyshot where I texture and render. I know that you can render and texture everything using Blender, but I prefer using Keyshot as it's much easier and it runs better for me. So I use Keyshot for adding in the materials like the car paint or the tire material and everything. And once I'm done with that, I render using Keyshot as well. And once the renderings are done, I move over to Affinity Photo and Photoshop. I won't be going in depth with everything in this video. I'll just be giving you an overview of everything and how I do what I do so you get a basic idea. But if you guys want, I can make a a more in-depth tutorial where I showcase everything and break it down step by step and you can get a better understanding and learn from it as well. So for this video we're gonna be modifying a Lamborghini Huracan. This model is by Iyad Lotfi and it's available for free on Gumroad. I'll leave a link down in the description so you can also get it and work on it. So another thing a lot of people ask me is that where do I get my 3D models from? And to answer that, I basically type in the name of the car that I'm looking for and then add 3D model after that. And that usually gets me the result that I'm looking for. Sometimes the models are free, sometimes they're paid, but that usually gets me what I'm looking for but in some rare case I can't find what I'm looking for then using game models is a good alternative um, because game models are also made using 3d software so you just have to rip them from the games and import them into your 3d software so that's a good alternative they do take some tweaking to get right but they do get the job done so before i start working on anything in blender i like to make sure that the scale of my model is correct and is close or as close to real life as possible it doesn't have to be completely accurate but it shouldn't be way too big or way too small because that messes with things later on let's say um I'm adding lights or I'm making other elements if I'm making a full CGI scene and if the scaling is off then you have trouble later on so it's a good habit to just make sure that the scale is correct before you work on the car itself so once I have the scale of the car down as you can see I checked on Google the length of a Lamborghini Huracan to make sure it was correct and then once that's done the model is scaled correctly I cut up the model in half and then I use a mirror modifier to mirror one side on the other. This helps in basically making things smoother later on. Let's say I work, on, I just have to work on one side of the car instead of working on both sides. So that's basically why I do it. So for the body kit, usually I start off by adding a circle to the front fender and making it fit or making it bigger than the wheel arch and getting as getting it as close to the front fender as possible and then I move it outwards from there so that's basically me making it wider and then once I have a good width set I start off by extruding the pieces a bit and then I use the snap on tool to snap the vertices onto the face of the car so basically I just follow the lines of the car and I get a rough outline and once that's done I shade it smooth and I also add a subdivision modifier so you can see over here that I changed the matte cap 
and I choose a reflective one so basically I can see the reflections of the model and make sure that there are no bumps or any irregularities over here so it doesn't look odd when like when the car gets painted or anything this is just me making sure that the fenders they um they sit well with the car and um just tweaking things here and there so once the front fender is done I thought that maybe I should add in a piece that extends down to the front of the car like a splitter almost or like an extension of the front fender in a way in just one piece so I continue working my way towards the center and then once I have that done I basically use um, I enable clipping in the mirror modifiers tab that basically joins the two halves together and they cannot be separated if you have the clipping on in the mirror modifier tab. So a lot of this is just basically trial and error. So I see what works with the car, what doesn't work with the car and then I just go along the way and just fix things and work with things. If something seems off I just work on it. So once I have the shape of the front bumper piece down, I have to extend it inwards to cover this um, gap um, between the custom piece and also the OEM front bumper. So I just extrude it backwards. I use the snap on tool again to snap on the faces. And then I work on the edges. Um, these take a bit of working on to get right but once you have the general shape down those should be good. I saw that the car had no interior so I just added in a little cylinder and just made a little dashboard just so that it doesn't look very empty. Usually my cars have interiors in them or the models that I use have interiors in them but this one didn't but that's okay because we're not going to be showing the interior of the car. Once the kit was done it was time for me to add the wheels so I added in the wheels. Um, I went with some body form wheels and some Toyo Proxys tires so one thing I like to do is basically add in a plane and then make it go through the tires a bit so that I get an idea of how the car looks like when it's like on the ground. So once um, the car was ready I just had to cut up the stock fenders because the wheels were going through it and sometimes in some angles it looks odd so I just cut up the fenders a bit and um, yeah once the car was done I moved on to importing it into Keyshot. Once it imported into Keyshot I added in the materials so I went with an orange paint over here. I also have um, my materials saved so I just have to look them up and then I can just drag and drop them. I don't have to work on them every time and it saves quite some time. Once the model was done being textured I imported it into a scene um, the Pierre scene, I've made it a while ago and I've used it a lot actually. I decided to change the color of the car last minute. I changed it to a yellow, a bright yellow. Then I just played around with the angles and I found something I liked and then I hit render. Once the rendering was done, I opened it in Affinity Photo where I tone map my images. So you can see I have a bunch of presets. Um, I like to work on a new one every time I make a new render so it gets so I get to spend more time tweaking it just to my liking. It takes a bit of time but I feel like it gets me better results where I get to work on each image individually and adjust it to my liking. So once that's done I add in a little bit of grain, a little bit of vignette and yeah I made some minor adjustments and yeah the car is basically done. Just like an, a quick overview of what I do but if needed I can turn this into a series where I go step by step. So that's all for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.